Here is what happens with narcissistic mothers. What, how do they, how do they um, interfere with boundary development, right? A lot of narcissistic mothers use love withdrawal methods. They withdraw love when the child attempts to set boundaries. If you don't share your toys and I'm not going to hug you or love you, or I'm not going to say, or you're a bad girl, you're a bad girl for not sharing, you know, just labeling kids bad or good from a young age. Um, and they internalize this message. And, you know, that's why a lot of us are like, well, I can't do that because I feel bad because I'm selfish because your mom taught you that you're selfish because you didn't want to share as a young girl. You are only loved if you do what I say. If you don't do what I say, I am going to take my love away. I am going to take my snuggles away. I'm going to take, you know, some of you, like maybe your mother is the one that gives you the silent treatment. The silent treatment is so painful. As children, it's extremely painful. And we internalize that pain. And, you know, when you're adults, when your mother does that, it's it's painful. It's still painful. You know, you know, as an adult, what's happening, but it still hurts. It's like a core, core wound of yours, where it's like your mother just doesn't speak to you. She just completely ignores you. That is so painful for a child. It hurts them to their core. So withdrawing love, um, the child learns that when they're good, they are loved, but when they are bad, mom doesn't love them. And the perception of bad is completely jaded when it comes to a narcissistic mother. They show hostility when a child tries to set boundaries. So they may uh, show contempt, right? They may give the child a look. They may say these things. They may belittle them. They may humiliate them at a very young age when they try to set boundaries. Now, for a lot of you, maybe your mother was like, all right, because you were kind of like a doll when you were young. You know, I saw narcissistic mothers think that their daughters are dolls when you're, you know, she could control you a little bit. But then when you start to individuate and separate as far as like becoming uh, a young woman, a teenager, she gets angry at you. She she starts she starts amping up that love withdrawal. She starts telling you that you're a slut, you're a whore. You know, a lot of mothers slut shame their daughters. She gets angry. You feel her wrath, her contempt when you're a young girl, when you start to separate yourself from her, when you start to become your own woman. So for some of you, you may retreat, become resentful and angry towards your mother. You may just become really small. Or you may uh, rebel, you know, like like do as much as you can because your mother is over here just trying to control you anyways. And she makes you feel terrible. She belittles you. She humiliates you. She slut shames you, which I feel is very common for narcissistic mothers. Now, if you are more infantilized, your mother tries to control every decision for you. So from a young age, she tells you, without me, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make the wrong decision. You internalize this message. So as an adult, you feel helpless. You feel powerless. You're like, if I make this decision, I'm going to ruin everything. I'm going to make mistakes. And this ties back to they don't allow the child to make mistakes. If you make a mistake, you're shamed. If you drop a glass of milk, like you're stupid. You should have known better. Why did you put that glass of milk there? You're like two years old, three years old. It's like, ma'am, like my motor skills are still, <laughs> you know what I mean? So things like that, they make the child fit the narrative of what they want for themselves, not what the child wants. Some mothers may ignore their children. They may neglect you. Like I said, silent treatment. And some of them don't set limits. Permissive parenting uh, allows just children to do whatever they want without setting limits. And that also could cause issues for the child. And then narcissistic mothers are very confusing when it comes to their limit setting too. So they may have limits, like say when you're at church or when you're with family, they may have set boundaries and limits like keep quiet you know, don't move, etc., or just something along the lines of that. But then at home, it's completely different. So it's confusing as a child, like this makes no freaking sense. But you know, you're a child. So that concept is so confusing for you, until you become an adult, and you're like, what the heck is this? And then they continuously traumatize their children to the point of feeling like the world is not safe. People are scary. And they make them feel like they can't control anything in their lives. This is where learned helplessness happens too, right? Um, depends on your mom. So for some, you became super self-sufficient where you don't need people. For some, you're like, I can't do anything because you are so full of fear that something's going to happen. So this is how a narcissistic mother interferes with boundary development from a very young age. Just love withdrawal in general. Loving a child with conditions is enough, you know, to disrupt separation, individuation, practicing hatching, reapproachment.